Today we're visiting the pond, my friends, and we are bringing some of these little mosquito fish in because I cannot tell you how many more mosquitoes have been here at the homestead this year. Jacques, Paul, some of the other guys on the team, we've all been getting absolutely clapped in the ankles by mosquitoes. So instead of going to a local nursery, which usually has these little mosquito fish for free, but they'll only give you like four or five, we have decided to order from the supplier of those nurseries about 50 of these tiny little mosquito fish. And they're called that, of course, because mosquitoes lay their eggs in usually water. Although the reason why the mosquitoes are so bad this year is because they're actually able to lay in very shallow water or damp soil. But these guys eat those larvae. So I'm gonna float them right now and then we'll let them in. Check out the koi. They are getting so big now. Look at that one guy right down there. I haven't named any of the koi. I'm a little traumatized because I have lost a few down the river here. But, uh, you know, I might have to if they make it this long. Okay, in we go. I'm just gonna float it for a little bit. The package says that you don't have to, but I'm a little paranoid here, so I'm just gonna float, let these guys get acclimated to the water. We'll be back in a sec. Okay, the moment is here, my friends. Take a look at those little guys. Let's cut them open and do a very dramatic pour into the epic pond. In you go, my friends. It's time to eat. Look at that. They're streaming out of here. Woo! We did lose a few of the mosquito fish on the trip, unfortunately, but the rest of them have kind of made their way. I see a couple over there. They're gonna be impossible to see, but they're basically getting into all the nooks and crannies. So we'll have to see if the mosquito pressure dies down. While the mosquito fish are settling in, I don't think I have to harvest the sweet potatoes right now, but I kind of want to, mostly because they're really getting hit by some sort of pest. I haven't dealt with one that has hit sweet potatoes quite like this before. So comment down below if you actually know what this is. But for now, I'm gonna just harvest and just see what I get. I've always struggled with sweet potatoes in San Diego because I never end up starting them soon enough in the year. And then they end up just not having enough time to grow. But I wanna say I got some here, guys. Look at this, I got a little cutie right here. Not bad. But let's go digging, let's see what we have. Jacques behind the camera right now, <laughs> literally losing his mind. What is this, dude? What is this? Dude, that's, that's a new record. It's the longest sweet potato. Uh, yeah, dude. It's that, that sweet potato is happy. It's <laughs> a beat. Is this a beat? <laughs> dude, weirdest sweet potato yield I've ever had in my life. Let's see. Oh, wait, hold on. Got to go get something special. Let me know what you guys think. I've been wanting these for a long time. I use the kneelers all the time. Look at this spider. Oh, my God. I almost... I don't know what that is, but it's not gonna be on my kneeler. Get off. Ooh, look at that. Hold on, let's get him over. There we go, and that's called respecting the wildlife. No, but I actually want your guys' feedback. So I'm a huge fan of the kneelers. I actually went to a manicure pedicure place, whatever that's called, with my girlfriend once, and they were gonna do a pedicure, because I was like, you know what, treat yourself. Let's see what this whole experience is about in the world of feminine care. And the guy goes, do you want me to start with your knees? And I was like, okay, I guess, like, I guess I hear you. So I, I, I hear that I, I wear, the, I use these kneelers all the time, but I actually want your guys' feedback. This is a more flexible one. I prefer it personally. It's kind of nice. It's very soft on the knees. And then you've got this sort of kickboard, a little bit harder style, both with the Epic branding on here. But I mean, they're both honestly quite nice, but I'd love to know your feedback. Just let me know which one you like. I'm gonna go with the softy. All right, let's get these out. Oh, shoot. Oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Hold on, a little bit of this. Not a bad little yield. I still have a huge one up front, but the hens are out. So I'm gonna wheel this over since we're in the middle of this fall redo here in the backyard and I'll just see what they wanna do. I mean, there's a ton of sweet potato vines for them and I don't have any more space in the compost. So let's see if the hens like it. I've been keeping them out more, mostly because it's end of season. So I'm not as worried if they eat stuff. And in fact, I kinda of want them to cause maybe there's some pests and bugs that they might pick up on. So we've already moved all the mulch out of this area. We're gonna be redoing the irrigation pretty soon. I think if I just kind of toss this in this open area, all the hens are taking shelter under the tree right now. We should be 
feasting pretty soon. Next up, I gotta hit these bananas. It's my dream to have a banana and I've been babying these things like crazy. So you can see all the stuff that's down here, all of this is stuff that I've macheted off. Like this little pup right here, that's coming off just like that. This guy right here, look at how many cut marks I've done. Doing yet another. It just doesn't want to stop. But I don't, I'm a little too afraid to like actually try to cut it out of the ground. But the thing that I really have to do is I cut down to four leaves. So we have one, two, three, four, five. This is the lowest one right here. So I'm gonna come through. I give it a upwards cut in the perfect world because if you do a downwards cut, you could actually peel the whole stem off. But you can also, if you're very pro like me, come through and just do a straight chop like that. Boom. And then all I do is I just lay this down just like that. Helps to mulch the ground. Again, one, two, three, four, five. So this one needs to go right here, come through. And then you run into that issue I said. That's why it's better to cut upwards, but in this case, I don't think too big a deal. The only other thing I'm gonna do a little bit later is put some more compost on top. But I've had more success with this technique than I've ever had growing bananas, so I will take it. The Machete Boys are back. If you don't already have chickens, I highly encourage you to get them. And then on days where you can actually spend some time supervising them in the backyard, just have them run around. Because I can't tell you how peaceful it is to be looking around every so often. Take a look under there. You can see labs under there. And you just see them kind of wandering around. It's very peaceful. We finally redid the shed a little bit. It's still not as organized as I might like, but it is way, way better than it was. And the peppers from the pepper apocalypse episode, they're starting to dry. Take a look. You can start to see that wrinkling, that creasing going on there. Even on these small guys, these Thai chilies, they're really starting to dry. So I was really worried because I didn't know what the best spot to hang peppers were. You ideally want somewhere that is somewhat cool, somewhat dry, and you could do it in the sun or, or not. And this is the best spot I had because the weather's just been so crazy here in San Diego. It'll be 90 degrees like it is today. And then we'll get a fog advisory the next day, which is just such a manic, frustrating pattern of weather. I know a lot of you watching, you're in an area like, oh, it must be nice to have that. Well, I have to say it's been a kind of weird. So what I need to do now is come into the greenhouse where it is hot as hell and figure out what I'm gonna put in those whiskey barrels that we just harvested the sweet potatoes out of. So the whiskey barrels, I've tried a bunch of different stuff in them. I really prefer doing herbs and greens, just whatever's really close to the house. Now I'm probably just gonna transplant around this time here, but there are some gnarly roots in here from the basil earlier this year. This is what I found to be really effective. I did do some sweet potatoes, but as you can see there, sometimes hit or miss. This year was better than the others. I just think it's so important, I used to not think this way, uh, of putting accessible stuff near the house. And yes, I am ripping the roots out. I don't know, for me, ripping roots out, especially in containers, especially in containers that are cycled very often, like these herb beds and these greens beds are, to me that's the play. I don't really go with like a no dig approach in that instance like this. It's gonna get recycled, it's just not gonna get recycled directly in this bed. And then I always give it a little top off. We'll go with some strawberry fields here. So here's that 16 cell I was talking about. I found one with a little bit healthier looking basil. Right now, a pencil, to me, is the easiest way to pop them out. You just kind of do that. And you've got these beautiful little plugs. I think next year what I'm gonna use this for is peppers. I'm in a season of expanding my pepper collection, hopefully next year. So what I'll do is I'll start them indoors or in the greenhouse in these guys, and I can do 16 different peppers in one little setup like this, which for me, if you watched our recent overwintering peppers video, is probably gonna be my approach because I already have some peppers that I grew this year that I'm gonna be growing next year. So I don't need too many more. Maybe just one of these will be what works. I want a lot of Genovese basil though. It's gonna remain hot here in San Diego for quite some time. So in I go with about four of these guys. When I transplant in like this, yes, there's about three or four basil in each of these little plugs. I personally don't think that's a big deal. If the basil crowds out, that's kind of what I want to happen anyways. So I'm gonna plant it like that. You could certainly thin it out if you want, or you could transplant it in right now, water it in, and then wait a little bit and thin it out after it sets in and has that nice sort of post-transplant shock settle in phase. So I found some cantaloupes or some melons kind of hanging out underneath the loofah arch. And I have to be honest, guys, like I just have too many of them right now. So fortunately, who likes cantaloupes and melons? Well, the chickens do. They like anything in the curcubit family. And so do worms. 
if you ever have like a worm composting bin and you ever want worms to just flock to it and go forth and multiply, just do something like this. Grab one of these, maybe we'll grab this smaller one, chop it up right in half, just like that. Nice looking lope though, huh? Let's go see who we can feed this to. Okay, I feel bad for the young hens. So I'm gonna put one of them just right here for them. I know they love this. There's Wednesday, there's Loaf, there's Cortado, and then our weird friend Manchego over there just, again, can't figure out how the fence works. I'm gonna leave this one here for them so they have their own, they don't get bullied off it. And the other one, I'm gonna go underneath the tree. Because if I let the hens out, this is, I swear, this is just like the only place they'd like to stay. All right, girls, where are you at? You're over there. There's some lope for you. There we go, we're getting a little action. Let's go, Chetty. You need to replenish newts from that molting you're doing. Lav, butter, butter's also molting. She's finally not brooding and now she's just molting, so she's always in some stage of transformation one way or another. It's been about a day since I put the mosquito fish in and I'm happy to report that they're not all immediately dead. There's one right there, there's about three or four underneath this little lily pad frond right here. And then I believe there's an entire new school over here now. The only reason I did it, I don't even know how many potential mosquito larvae are in here, but if you look at this area of the pond, if I was a mosquito, right about here is where I'd be laying because the water doesn't quite clear from here. And so I figured these little guys would multiply if I had enough males and females, and they'd come in and kind of clean up all the potential larvae that are floating around in here. But the pond looks really nice after the refresh that Jacques and I gave it. And in general, I feel like we're getting to fall. I don't know when, but I feel like we're finally getting there. I'm at least prepping for it. I'm gonna redo this whole backyard like I mentioned. Let me know what kind of style you wanna see. If you remember the early days here, I had the eight raised beds and then the two long beds. This year I went big patch and the long beds. I kinda of wanna mix it up in a big way this year. So if there's a cool design or feature that you'd really like to see in the backyard homestead, comment it down below. Until next time, my friends, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.